that these statutes often only recognize relationships by blood. So they will not recognize things like your living domestic partner as being someone who can take through the intestacy statute. They also don't recognize things like your children through marriage, or your best friend, or a charitable or political cause that you might want to donate to. So none of these people will get anything if you don't write them. Are you scared yet? <laughs> don't worry, it's not that frightening. I'm going to walk you through it. We're going to get through this together. Um, so currently, how many of you are depending on a friend who knows your password for inheritance? For your friends <laughs> to get your cryptocurrency. Yeah, okay, good. I like the honesty out there. There's way more of you. Okay. B, how about my family remembering what I've told them about Bitcoin and a sticky note? <laughs> yeah, right? They're like, listen, dude, I've totally talked to my cousin about my Bitcoin and they're good. Like, they know how to access it, right? No, they don't. Um, so, I'm sorry to, to be a Debbie Downer here, but the reality is that um, you will be very, very lucky if your family actually even remembers what cryptocurrencies you own, let alone are interested at all in that when you die. You guys are Bitcoin nerds, okay? I am too, it's okay, but the rest of your family, they're not. That is not going to be what they're thinking about when something happens to you. They're going to be grieving, right? And so the likelihood is that they're not even going to remember that there's a sticky note about Bitcoin. Um, C is my favorite one. Who is just planning on immortality? <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. Again, I love the honesty there, right? So the idea is I'm just not gonna die and I don't have to worry about this stuff. I don't even know why I'm here. I could have hung out outside. I don't need this talk. Um, the reality is hopefully by the end of this talk, I'll be moving you just a little bit closer to D, which is a detailed, documented, and tested plan. If you walk away with one thing from this talk, I want you to think about that planning actually puts you in control. Without planning, the state is in control, luck is in control, and right now we've all been pretty lucky with Bitcoin, so maybe we want to take control of that too. So why don't people do this? Like, you all know that you should do this, right? Who thinks that they shouldn't do estate planning? Exactly. So everyone knows that they should do this. Why don't we do it? What is stopping us? Well, there are four common arguments that I hear from people as to why they don't do an estate plan or an inheritance plan. The first and biggest is, I have to hire a lawyer. <laughs> no one wants to do that. Do we have any lawyers in the house today who will admit? Aside from me, I am a lawyer. Yeah? Okay, good. So, you know, we're not the most loved bunch. Front. Um, and most people do not want to hire a lawyer and they don't want to think about death anyway. So they think like, okay, this is going to be really expensive and I, and I really don't know what this whole process is going to be like. And so it's much more fun to go on Reddit or Twitter and talk about like 2X or you know, who's saying what or whatever other drama is, is in the industry than it is to plan. Um, I want to tell you that this is a mistake in you do not have to hire a lawyer in order to do uh, estate planning for cryptocurrency. And here's the truth. The truth about cryptocurrency estate planning is that it requires two things, not just one. You have to have a technical side to your plan, which means that you have to figure out how your keys are going to be backed up and where those backups are going to be held and how people are going to actually access those seeds. That's the technical side. No lawyer, except me, and maybe another three or four in the industry, can help you with that right now, okay? Most lawyers are on the legal side of this. So we've got the technical side, and then we've got the legal side. And the legal side is, how do we make sure that what your technical plan is, is actually carried out by the law, is act actually happens? So you've got the tech side and the legal side, both of those have to come together. But importantly, what this means is that you don't have to hire a lawyer to do the tech side. You can get started on that today, and I'm going to show you how in just a minute. Second most common uh, mistaken belief, I have to trust a third party. So people are terrified of this idea that, okay, I have to trust a third party with my keys. And what happens if you trust a third party with your keys? Steal it. Uh, yeah, exactly, they steal your money, right? So the whole point of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in these systems is to get rid of this third party. And so we think we have this mistaken belief that if we try to plan and do inheritance, we're going to have to introduce that third party back in. We don't want to be part of that. So we don't, so we don't do it. 
That is a mistaken belief, it is not true. You can do inheritance planning without trusting a third party. There are lots of creative ways to do this, and in the article I wrote, I give you a bunch of examples of how to do this, but this is a mistaken belief. Number three, increased risk of theft. I can't tell you how often I hear this. So here's the argument, ready? If I write down what I have, some nefarious person is gonna find it, and then they're gonna steal all my Bitcoin. Right? How many of you think that that, or at least used to think, now that you know it's a mistake, that that's what was going to happen? A lot of, yes, a lot of people are afraid to plan. They're afraid to do a security audit for themselves. They're afraid to do inheritance planning because they think they're going to create a roadmap for the thief. Okay? What is much more likely is that you're going to lose your keys or that you're going to pass or something bad is going to happen to you and your family isn't going to be able to access it. One of the beauties of decentralization is that we decentralize the risk. So remember, we're not trusting a third party, so we don't need to be terrified that someone's gonna find that third thing and run away with it. Now, I am not advocating that you go home today, take a piece of paper out, write down all your seed words, and write down all your access points on one piece of paper, okay? That would be a terrible idea. But there are ways to do it that you can, that you can distribute the risk. Last mistaken belief, the value is too low to plan. I used to hear this a lot when Bitcoin was in the neighborhood of like uh, $1,200. <laughs> Do we remember that? Does anyone remember $200? Oh, there you go, okay. Anyone remember $30? Anyone remember $1? Oh, Aaron. Yeah, right? Um, so the thing about these assets are the, the value is unpredictable as we know, but recently it's been going up and up and up. And one of the ways that I know the Bitcoin price is going up without looking is that I get contacted by people who are freaking out. They're like, um, hey, uh, I have a bunch of Bitcoin and Ether, and like, it didn't used to be worth anything, but now it's like 30% of my entire net worth. Maybe I should do something about it. So there are a lot of people right now who are sitting on you know, what, what someone else might call a very small amount of Bitcoin or ETH, and they might say, you know what, it's, it's not worth it for me to plan. But I'm gonna show you free ways, free and easy ways that you can plan to protect that value. And hopefully, the value's gonna skyrocket, right? We haven't hit the top, have we? No. No, <laughs> we all want it to go higher. So ideally, the value of these things are gonna grow and grow and grow. I think those are all of the reasons that people give me that they don't wanna plan. But I think the real reason that people don't wanna plan is denial and fear. We do not want to face our immortality. We don't want to think about dying, because it's not fun, right? No one wants to think about this, and so we use all of these excuses as reasons not to do the things that we know that we should do. So, my dad was raised as a Christian scientist. Any of you familiar with Christian science? Okay. So, one of the things that he taught me is that our mind is very powerful and we can use our mind to think about things in different ways, and we can use it to motivate us to do different things. So I want you to take a quick look at this. Got it? How many people see a duck? Raise your hand. How many people see a bunny? Raise your hand. How many people now see both? Two things can be seen in very, one thing can be seen in very different ways, in two completely different ways. So the point of the duck and bunny is to show you that this picture can be more than one thing. We can look at estate planning in more, in more than one way. And I'm gonna give you three different ways to look at this estate planning to make it not horrible and make it fun and hopefully motivate you and encourage you to actually do this. Ready? So for those of you who are givers, you know who you are, the people who just love to give to other people. If this is you, then think about estate planning as your opportunity to give an amazing gift to someone. Think about how much Bitcoin any of you have right now. What if someone gave you that equivalent amount? How happy would you be, right? You would be stoked, you'd be so excited. So this is your opportunity to do this for your friends and family. So you can look at it as giving a gift. You can also look at it as doing a security makeover. For those of you who think that you know, you're not sure how secure your assets are, 
This is a great excuse for you to go through and do a full security audit, which is what you'll need to do in order to do estate planning, and figure out what you have. You know, are there wallets that you haven't backed up? Do you have your backups? How many people in this room know where all their backups are right now? Very good. Are you sure? You gonna go home and check? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hopefully you will. Um, so you know, you can look at this as a security makeover, something that you do for yourself to protect your own assets. But my personal favorite is to think of this as a time machine mission. Okay? For those of you that are gamers in the house, you like um, you like these sorts of, of, of adventure movies. Think of it as a time machine mission where you're gonna set up like, the secret map to untold riches. And so you can actually think about, hey, what if I was this person who found this map? What would this be like for me? And you can run through it that way. So how do you start? There are a couple of different resources uh, that I've made available after authentication for all of our devices, meaning that you can't just use your password, you need a password plus something else. And the reason we do that is because these assets are digital and they're easy to steal. So I've written an article about this that can walk you through like how to remove SMS recovery and how to, how to use a password manager, and all of those sorts of things. So you should be using those and going through and doing a security self audit. Then you wanna write a time machine message, right? So you wanna go through and give them instructions. Step by step, what do they need to do in order to access your holdings? And then finally, do a little bit of role play, okay? Pretend like you got amnesia and try and follow your own plan step by step. And where it fails, make it better. It's as easy as that. So once we have the tech side of the plan, then we can consider the legal side of the plan. In some states, you can write a holographic will, and what that means is basically you just can't write your will and sign and date it. Uh, estate planning is a state by state issue. So if you're currently residing in Illinois, the rules are different than if you're currently residing in Indiana or elsewhere uh, around the US, and also obviously elsewhere around the world. Um, there's another little trick that you can use, which is a legal trust. How many of you know what a legal trust is? Okay, good, maybe half of you. Um, so a legal trust is like a corporation, except the purpose of the corporation is to hold assets for the benefit of someone else, beneficiaries. You can use a legal trust to hold your Bitcoin or your ETH or any of your cryptocurrencies. And the magic of that is, if something happens to you, if you pass away, nothing changes with the trust. Just like if I have a company and I pass away, the company continues to operate. So this is a different way to consider estate planning and management that isn't triggered by your death or some other uh, calamity. Dead man switch. Okay. Every time I give this talk, somebody in the audience is like, yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard you talk about these papers, and I've heard you talk about, uh, about this, this legal stuff, but listen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a dead man switch, and I'm going to have it automatically transfer all of my assets to my friend, my cousin, my sister, or whoever, right? How many of you have heard of a dead man switch before in cryptocurrency estate planning? Yeah, there are at least four companies that I can name right now that are working on this problem. Um, I don't think they're going to be successful yet. Why? Number one, this technology is far too immature to do this. I would not risk my money, and I wouldn't recommend you risk yours on it. Um, the safest multi-sig smart contract on the Ethereum network lost 200 million recently? Yes, that's right, 200 million. Um, so if you would, would like to be a, a, a tester for that for the rest of the community, uh, you can feel free to lock your crypto up in that. I would not do it and I wouldn't recommend that again to you know, my friends or family. Um, also, these dead man switches assume that you have constant connectivity. You have to have access, right? The idea of a dead man switch is, I get this little reminder thing, and if I don't log into this service, then this transfer automatically happens, okay? If I don't reply to this email, then my ETH is automatically sent to my cousin. Well, what does that do? That incentivizes my cousin to make sure that I don't reply to that email, right? <laughs> I mean, effectively, that's what it does. Um, so you can actually have unintended consequences using this, this technology that you obviously did not think about. And then finally, there are multiple legal issues. So if you transfer all of your Bitcoin to your cousin, right? 
But under the law, all of those assets are supposed to go to your son. What happens? How does this actually play out in the real world? Lawsuit, yes, that's exactly right. So what happens is cousin gets the cousin gets the, the, the Bitcoin, right? And cousin's like, what? You can't take the Bitcoin. And the son is like, what? File suit against them for the car, the house, every every other asset that they own, okay? And what actually happens is the lawyers get most of the money. Because now you've got a lawsuit that your cousin has to defend, that your you know, that your son has to bring, and it's a complete mess, plus you're dealing with grieving. So I, I don't recommend that you do these sorts of you know, automatic transfers, mostly because humans are involved. <laughs> In closing, and for those of you that are doing your lightning talks, uh, you might want to come up here and prepare yourselves. Um, what I want you to remember is that humans die and cryptocurrencies don't. And so we need to do some planning, especially those of you who are here, you're risk takers. You're in this for a reason. You have Bitcoin and you have Ether because you think that this ecosystem is worth spending your time and money on. And I think that your family probably doesn't appreciate the value yet, but they will. I encourage you to start planning today. Um, there are a couple of different projects that I'm working on that you might want to know about. Um, you can learn more at Third Key Solutions. But um, I'm doing a security and uh, inheritance book, and damn, damn is how you have to say it, which is short for the Decentralized Arbitration and Mediation Network, is another project that uh, we've been working on with Third Key Solutions that deals with alternative dispute resolution and um, kind of uncoupling identity and justice. If you're interested in, in those sorts of topics, please come and talk to me after. And um, also, I'm doing research on exchanges and hosted wallets. Um, so if any of you are know people uh, who are at exchanges and hosted wallets around the world, what I mean by hosted wallets are people that hold and control other people's keys. If you know those people, um, please encourage them to come and talk to me. I'm doing research in the industry to find out, A, um, if they've had clients that have died, and uh, here's the Quentin Tarantino for you, uh, all but one have said yes, uh, some in the hundreds. So um, this is happening, people are passing. I'm trying to find out if they have policies in place, if they allow legal trusts to um, open accounts, and all sorts of uh, nerd stuff like that. Uh, and then I'm going to write a report and make the report available to the community. So um, if you're interested in this, you know, please let me know. Finally, for those of you who are uh, do not want to procrastinate anymore, and you actually feel like today is the day that you want to start doing estate planning, I encourage you to reach out to me on Twitter or via email and say like, okay, I want to do this, and I'll be, I will respond to you. And I will say, okay, listen, you said you wanted to do this. Are you doing it? I won't nag you forever. But you know, I will, I will send you links if, if you want them, and uh, I will do my best to, to help you do this. So thank you so much for your time. <laughs>